Back on a Thursday with a little K-State football recruiting update for everybody out there as the Cats coming off the heels of not just a big weekend on the field where they beat KU for the 16th straight time, a big weekend because there was, what, half a million recruits and visitors in the house on it Saturday? It does feel like that. Yeah, uh, but a lot of info and feedback coming from those players after K-State's win over KU. And uh, let's not mess around. Let's just jump straight into it with maybe the most notable. Um, if you want the full update, go over to On3, find K-State online. But Drew was able to have a pretty good conversation with Lincoln Cure and get some of his thoughts and reactions from the visit on Saturday where he got to see his brother lose to K-State. Uh, yeah, so the, the full update is on K-State online. The thing that I think would be – Kind of the, the most noteworthy things would be that there still is no scheduled visit to Oregon at the moment. I know that that's probably the, the question that everybody really wants to know is what's going on on that front. But it kind of sounds like status quo, which is that he might visit, but he might not. And it's not scheduled. And that visit is scheduled to take place now as we're uh, recording this next week. So you kind of get that feeling that 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 visit might not even take place, which, again, is a good thing for K-State. Uh, if you can keep Lincoln Cure in the fold, it's it's always a good thing. And the, the longer that this has gone on without the visit like fully being penciled in, just the, the better that I've thought about it. And there's also a really good quote from, from Lincoln. I've asked uh, him, RJ Collins, and I can't remember if I asked Noah King, uh, because this this week has just been a a blur in, in my world of uh, recruiting <laughs> yeah. basketball football. Uh, I've asked everybody or all three the the commits uh, of those commits of like what would you say to somebody that's like considering K State, and, and you get the full quote. Uh, but the end of the quote that uh, Lincoln put in was that it feels good to be a cat, and I think that that's something that is more substantial than anything he's ever said related to Oregon. It is more substantial than I think anything that has really came out in the last handful of weeks, months now, that he is very happy with his decision and kind of seems to be settled in. A lot like RJ Collins, who who put out another kind of commitment tweet-ish thing. Reaffirmed the commitment. He more, he more or less just reaffirmed the commitment and was just like, hey, this is me shutting my recruitment down to everybody else. He, uh, he went and he updated his confidence level in his, uh, his on three prediction by uh, like 5% like I did for Lincoln Cure uh, when we were driving out to Goodland. Uh, and we had boots on the ground. Yeah. Uh, I, I would also throw this out there for people. If uh, you're, you're wanting just kind of logistics – to help out, um, you probably want Goodland to beat Heston this week uh, in the, the 3A state playoffs. Uh, also, that's a good note for anybody that's in the, the South Central Kansas area. If you want to go watch Lincoln Cure in person, this is easily the best chance you've had in probably his entire time. high school career uh, to not have to travel too far west because you just have to go and uh, catch the Cowboys and Swathers this week, which uh, I would absolutely be there if we wouldn't be on the road to Houston. So uh, that's good news on the Lincoln Cure front for anybody that continues to be totally worried by that. And I would say, based on everything we've heard and we know, it just feels like one of those things that even if the visit happened to Oregon, that's one of those where you do it and you still have to be so 100% sure that you want to. And I think by the end of it, the outcome would still be the same. I think he would still uh, want K-State to be the, the final choice there. So it uh, seems like K-State's in a good spot. Yeah, and you also look at it on the Oregon front, too, that it, it looks like they're really trending to flip uh, Washington uh, commit Vander Plug. And there's another uh, Michigan commit that's also heavily considering uh, flipping to Oregon as well. So yeah. you kind of look at it on their front of like they it seems like they are trying to kind of get out in front because they seem less confident that they can flip link and cure than they had before. And you also bring up that game against uh, Heston, uh, which will be tomorrow. You know, when Avery Johnson played in Topeka uh, right before 
uh, K State played their first game in 2022. There was a crap load of purple in the stands uh, to watch Avery. So I'm interested to see and kind of get a vibe on what the crowd is in Heston to see if there if is there a lot of purple there because the, there is probably more purple than than not at when Avery and Mays took yeah. on Speaker High and and it was the first time I've ever seen a high school game where the starting quarterback came out without pads in the second half because their team was up so much. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, well, I remember you showing up then that night to the, the K state uh, season opener sunburnt as can be and being like, yeah, he just kind of had to wait around while he uh, didn't play there. Uh, I unfortunately know one group of people that will be in Heston Friday night that will not be wearing purple. Uh, so shout out to my uh, cousin and his family. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope the Shrogs are really enjoying another K State law, uh, K State win over KU and a, a Jayhawk loss this week. Great people, just I enjoy their suffering uh, when it comes to that rivalry. All right. Uh, in addition to Lincoln Cure, there were a ton of other players that made it up this weekend. Let's start with some of the guys that are committed. You mentioned R.J. Collins, and then basically every other member of this class. Uh, outside of a couple that travel-wise it just didn't work out and make sense, we're in Manhattan for it. Um, what was kind of the the overwhelming vibe that you got from all the commits? The biggest vibe that I got was, number one, that almost all the commits talked about the atmosphere and just talked about how electric it was inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium, which that last drive, it did get extremely loud. You and I know this. That the the press box at K State isn't really conducive to being able to like hear the crowd, like feel it. You you could feel it on, on that last drive, and I think that that really helped uh, with just the overall atmosphere and what everything was like. Uh, number two, a lot of the commits said that this was the best visit that they've taken to K State. Part of that is the atmosphere, but then that leads me to the third thing, which was that they all talked about how cool it was that they had so many of their classmates there. And that everybody was really able to meet in person because that that's something that I don't think it's talked about enough recruiting wise is that when you're picking all these guys out from all across the country, a lot of them before they get on campus, unless they happen to take an official visit at the same time or like we're at a camp with somebody else, a lot of them have only really spoken over text, Snapchat, and maybe on FaceTime. Like a lot of them haven't been able to have like face to face communication with each other. And they all really enjoyed getting to really get to see everybody and get to see what everybody's personality is like when they're not just like in this group chat together. Yeah, it is such a, a weird thing. Like these are guys that by the end of it at K-State are going to turn out to probably be some of the closest friends and, and people that they have in their life. But uh, they go through basically a handful of months or some an entire year uh, without – really uh, knowing these guys are face to face, but uh, this is one of those things where I think K-State had a lot of things going for them. Obviously you have the rivalry. It's good to show these guys that get it kind of indoctrinated into them early. The crowd was great. And I also think for a lot of these, these players, now some of them already been up for, for unofficials as commits, but most of them getting in here the first time as a commit, I think it's probably a different feeling in that regard as well. Um, in terms of the guys that aren't committed that were on visits, so either any uncommitted 2025 guys, a small number, and then 26 and beyond, um, what's kind of been the the thought process from those players? Yeah, for really the, the 2026 class was where a lot of the focus was. I think that there was close to probably 30 to 35. It would be the ballpark that I'd have with 2026 players. And, and it's kind of that similar vibe of, okay – the, the atmosphere was pretty electric, but the thing that has really stood out to me uh, was actually from Manhattan's uh, JJ Dunnigan talking about how he's been to K State. That was his third K State game. And he talked just repeatedly about how the atmosphere and seeing that many recruits was super cool to him and that how, how much of that visit really impacted him. Uh, because, I, and I, I just think that there was so many good vibes going on during the game and at the game, because again, a lot of these players don't know 
each other when they just see them face to face. Like JJ Dunnigan talked about how it was cool to like meet Ian Premer and to meet Max Robinson and to meet some of these other 2026 kids in the state of Kansas where they don't really have that opportunity unless they just happen to all be visiting the same place. So I think that you kind of see that. And, and that's something that's really impactful. And I think that that will bode well for K State really down the line. And, and it always helps too when you have some guys coming from out of state, like Tucker Smith, an offensive lineman from Arizona, went to the same high school as Ryan Davis. He one of the highlights that he said about his entire visit was that uh, was that Ryan Davis talked to him before the game. And so like you you get to really see that. So I, I think that K State just did a really really good job of just presenting the game and taking care of all of these recruits that were at the game and, and also feeding them well because I can't tell you the amount of people that were at that visited for the game that have said that the food was one of their favorite parts because whatever they had was so good. So I, I'm trying to do some more research on what 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 they had for this unofficial visit because it's probably been brought up like four times as like yes the game and the atmosphere was like super fun and all that. But also, like, the food was one of mine as well. Well, K-State uh, does does the food right for uh, athletes of any kind, it sounds like, because that was one of the things that uh, that Coleman Hawkins had talked about uh, at Big 12 Media Day last week was uh, how he liked the food set up at K-State better than than Illinois. So uh, that's, that's all good to hear. Now, K-State, in terms of how they're kind of setting this up, they got a 25 commit. Uh, on the heels of the the Sunflower Showdown. They also got a 26 commit. The first, we have uh, a breakdown of both of those players over on the KSO YouTube as well, so you can go watch that from earlier in the week if you haven't. How close do you think some of these other 26 guys that K-State would really like, uh, would they be to, to making a decision? And out of those players, who do you think it would be maybe two or three uh, that are priority guys that could have a decision within – I don't know. I mean, it it sounds crazy to say, but it's probably like three, four months, which doesn't sound close for some people. But I think in terms of the recruiting cycle, it would be pretty quick. Um, so where does that stand in your eyes? Yeah, there's probably a few that are pretty close on that, like December, January, February timeline. Uh, one, I think, would probably be a Texas wide receiver, another Texan, uh, Corbin Glasgow. Uh, he camped at K-State uh, last summer, I guess this past summer, uh, got an offer and then came up for the KU game. And, and I think that that really opened his eyes as, okay, this is a place that I could potentially see myself going. I think he said that K-State is one of his top two or three schools, but it's probably more towards the top than not. Uh, another one is another receiver uh, from Topeka, uh, Tyrant Parker. I think K-State's been in a good spot for him for a while. And, and I, I don't know what a timeline looks for him, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if he is probably the next 2026 commit. Uh, and then and then another, and I know that this, this will be one that uh, K-State fans really enjoy because, again, in-state tight ends, they just keep rolling <laughs> into Manhattan. Uh, but I think that K-State's in a very good spot for great Ben tight end Ian Primer as well. And, and this is a, another one where I don't know if people really understand how much that Lincoln Kira has done for K-State. But one of the highlights, again, for Ian Primer was getting to talk to Lincoln Kira and kind of pick his brain a little bit. So it, it doesn't help or it doesn't hurt when you have your – all world tight end getting to talk to this other kid that's coming up and being like, Hey, I had all these offers and I came to K state. Why don't you do the same thing? Yeah. It's uh, it, everybody talks about, Oh, the tight end showing like that was so great for Lincoln cure and everything. Like Lincoln cure is already committed. I get wanting to kind of keep adding some juice to, to this for him, but uh, it was also a big deal for Ian Primer who, who was there. And, uh, again, the best player in the state next year is a tight end in the class of 26 that uh, K-State will be wrestling for 
uh, with Ian Primer, who right now is 142 in the uh, on three industry rankings. So something to keep in mind. And he's even higher in just the the on 300. He's the 69th best player uh, in the country, nice. according to on three. So uh, he's he's in a good spot there and uh, seems like a pretty good weekend for K-State. Now, uh, anybody else that was in attendance that you think this visit went a long ways in, in pushing K-State closer to the top? Maybe not guys that it seems like K-State's either – not necessarily a lock for, but likely the winner or guys that we know that K-State has been established as, hey, it's either here or K-State. Um, who, who stands out as maybe K-State making that push with some guys? Yeah, the the one that I think that I would highlight right away is J.J. Dunnigan. I, I think that K-State has always been in a good spot with Nebraska, but I think that this past visit really – pushed him a little bit more towards K-State. And it'll be interesting because he's already came to three games if he ends up coming to a game in November. Uh, and then another one is another in-state uh, product as well uh, from Mays South, Hunter Higgins. I, I just think that this was his second game. And again, he came to games last year, so did J.J. Dunnigan. And <laughs> the, the takeaway is that this was his favorite, his best one. So you... The vibes were extremely high after the game. And, and I talked with uh, Scott Wildcat on Bosco's Boys and did uh, a recruiting show with, with him uh, that dropped earlier this morning uh, as we're uh, doing this recording that he he kind of was asking me about like what the, what the vibes were. And, and I said that it probably didn't feel good during the game, but that game being close kept the atmosphere so electric and winning the game that K-State did kept it on like such a high that I think that it has really catapulted their uh, status with the guys that came out on unofficial visits even more. So, so I think that it might have sucked in the moment, but I think that it has really helped with some of these recruits because the atmosphere and the game and the back and forth nature of the game has been something that I think everybody that I've talked to uh, in this aftermath of the game has really talked about. Yeah, that's a good point because I, in the moment, obviously the game, the rivalry, the everything as a fan, you look at it and go, it wasn't very fun. Like I'd been saying, I enjoyed those games a lot more when I was 15 years old and it, KU never sniffed being within a score. But you think about it from the recruits point of view, they got a night game with, one of the best crowds that you could possibly see, like, you know, Jerome Tang always talks about, we want people there out of love. Look, people hate KU so much because of their love for K-State. So when you have that crowd that is there for love and hate, you get a lot of juice into it. Um, I think that was probably good. You get a fully engaged 60-minute crowd as opposed to, uh, like, if K-State just kind of rolls that thing like normal, they're probably like, yeah, it was pretty awesome first half, but, like, What's that second half like where you're not really locked into the game? You're just kind of moseying around and everything. Uh, so if you want a, a master spin zone on everything, it would be that. Uh, but yeah, I, I, notable how it all worked out and plenty of recruiting updates in full over on KSO right now. So go to on three, get it checked out, everything that Drew has coming your way. And I'm uh, sure that more will be coming along as well. Uh, one of K-State's more notable commits, Noah King, uh, he discussed his visit over the weekend, which he had an official visit because he had committed without making an official to K-State yet. So uh, go get the lowdown from him there. Before we get out of here, I want to remind everybody to uh, stop procrastinating, get on it, figure out your Ireland plans right now, get that passport. You know, Maybe you've done enough to get the PDF downloaded real quick into uh, your files on your computer. How about you print it out now and then think about getting in the car and going down the road and everything uh, to do that. But the Wildcats are headed to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. And you can join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats, the number two, Ireland.com. And uh, if anybody's wondering, how can I get tickets right now? That's how you get tickets right now and guarantee that you'll have a spot, a really good one, maybe get a really nice package with it. 
Cats2Ireland.com will get you locked in to everything you need. It's kind of a one-stop shop, and you don't have to worry about anything else. They'll take care of it all for you, so you can do that at Cats2Ireland.com. All right, Drew, thanks for this recruiting update on a Thursday. We will be back again tomorrow, DY and I, previewing the Cats and the Cougs down in Houston this weekend.